Hi, everyone, and good afternoon. Thank you guys for joining us today. I uh, will introduce myself. So I'm Kiana Mitchell, and I'm the Partnerships Manager with Experience Columbus. And today, I will also be your moderator. Before we get started on um, this exciting topic about the power of tourism in Columbus, I did want to go over a few housekeeping items. Uh, to make everyone aware, you will be muted throughout the entire webinar broadcast. If you have any questions, you can pose them in the questions box on your screen. And then we do have staff monitoring that box so we can make sure that we get your questions answered. Additionally, this uh, webinar will be recorded. So we will be sending out a link We will be sending out a link um, just so you guys have access to it so you can reference it. Um, and then that email will have the link uh, to our website. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and get started. And I will go ahead and introduce today's panelists. So today we have with us Jim P Peterson, Chief Executive uh, at Easton and Signer and Associates. Uh, Jen joined Steiner and Associates in 2015 and oversees the entire Easton property in the chief executive role. She is, she is responsible for creating an environment that enhances the customer experience, drives tenant sales and positions Easton for continued growth. She works to create an emotional connection between Easton and its guests, delivering compelling, engaging, and memorable experience experiences. With the COVID-19 pandemic and the post-quarantine safe restart of the shopping destination, her work became even more challenging. Jen and her team have worked around the clock to ensure that all guests feel safe returning to Easton as well that they ha also have a positive uplifting experience. As a result of these efforts, Easton was recently tapped as a top 10 comeback center by Chain Store Age magazine. A University of Michigan graduate, Jen earned her Bachelor of Arts in Psychology there. Always very active in her community, she currently serves as the Board of Directors for the Center for Healthy Families, Leadership Columbus, where she was part of the graduating class of 2016, and Alvis. She has received numerous awards, honors, and recognition, including being a Columbus Business First 40 Under 40 recipient, a Columbus Smart 50 Award honoree, the Northwest Volunteer of the Year, a Most Admired Executive C-Suite Award honoree, and a Well 2020 Women Welding the Wake Calendar honoree. So thank you, Jen, for joining us this afternoon. Wow, I didn't know you were going to list all those things. Thank you, Kiana. Well, that's I okay. <laughs> Um, and then we have Carrie Kaufman, VP of Tourism with Experience Columbus. Uh, Carrie is the Vice President, uh, as I mentioned, for Experience Columbus and is a 30 plus year veteran of the tourism industry. And her current position at Experience Columbus, Carrie manages a department who are responsible for individual and group leisure sales, in destination visitor experience, and tourism market research. Carrie is also a recipient of the Paul Sherlock Award, which is bestowed annually by the Ohio Travel Association to an individual in recognition of an ongoing commitment to the development and promotion of travel and tourism. Carrie is a current U.S. Travel Destinations Council Board member, as well as a Dine Originals Board member. She is the past member of the Greater Columbus Arts Council Board and a past appointee to the Ohio Travel Advisory Council. So thank you, Carrie, for joining us this afternoon. Of course, thank you. And then our last panelist is Sarah Towns. She is the VP of Marketing with Experience Columbus. Sarah has over 20 years of marketing leadership experience, working with a range of brands, including Aveda, Caribou Coffee, Kellogg Cereals, Gander Mountain, Marshall Fields, Mall of America, Sears Holdings Corporation, Tresemme Hair Care, Walt Disney Parks and Resorts, and many more. 
Throughout Sarah's career, she has spearheaded brand and rebrand strategies, agency relationship management, creative development, production, digital innovation, social media, PR, and strategic partnerships to exceed business growth trajectories. As a graduate from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign with a degree in advertising, Sarah's prior campaign work has earned numerous industry awards, including being named SRB 40 Under 40 Class of 2016, two Effie Awards, a Webby Award from the International Academy of Digital Arts and Sciences, and two Silver Ambles from the Public Relations Society of America. So thank you, uh, Sarah, for joining us this afternoon. Thank you for having me. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and get started with our questions this afternoon. My first question today is for Sarah. Sarah, can you give an overview on how Columbus is being marketed um, as far as what mediums are being used, uh, who is being targeted, um, and where is Experience Columbus marketing? Sure. So just taking a step back, um, really from the onset of COVID-19, Experience Columbus has pivoted from the role of a traditional convention and visitors bureau, which is really all about bringing visitors from the outside in to a local community champion and information hub for residents, partners, and businesses navigating the effects of this global pandemic. Um, so our priority during this time has really been around supporting the local community with important content, the latest information on COVID-19 health and safety information, and ultimately really trying to foster community pride. Um, in early May, we launched a new campaign titled Live Forward with three, three, three uh, key components that really were all about putting health and safety first as we timed our announcements and our marketing with Governor DeWine's announcements of safely reopening our state. Um, so the components of the campaign were the Live Forward Pledge, which I know many of you on this call have signed. The Live Forward Pledge really gives our business community the opportunity to share with their patrons and guests what they're doing to put their health and safety first. When you sign the pledge, you get some um, information, you get a, a logo and a door decal to put in your organization so that your guests know everything that you're doing um, to keep them safe from the impacts of COVID-19. Um, we also really facilitated a strategic gathering of content around sharing how our business community are living forward during this time. Um, and encouraged our partners and residents to share their inspirational content. Like many others during this pandemic, Experience Columbus had significant budget cuts um, that were made at the beginning of um, this, the, at the, at the beginning of when we all felt these impacts, so back in March and April. So initially, we started our campaign really leveraging Experience Columbus's owned marketing channels. Um, we spent a lot of time amplifying our partner business content, the content from our attractions, restaurants, certainly retail such as Easton, and everything that they were doing across all of our social channels. We used our website, our CRM, our you know, customer relationship management opportunities, as well as really focused on PR and being able to share the amazing stories coming out of Columbus, both locally regionally, but also nationally. And we received some great accolades for our community, even on a national scale for the work that was being done, not only by Experience Columbus, but by all of the amazing businesses as they really pivoted um, and putting health and safety first and you know, came up with kind of the new normal uh, for their business operations. Most recently, we launched our paid media campaign, um, again, as I mentioned, to coincide with the reopening. It gave us the opportunity to focus on those various categories of business. Um, as the governor said, they were safe to get, get back to work. So um, in early July, we uh, were able to put additional media in the marketplace. But as I said, for the first time, Experience Columbus has really focused locally first and then expanded out. 
So we did put media into the local marketplace, um, developed a number of local broadcast partnerships, again, all with the interest of amplifying the content and work that our partners are doing. Um, we also are in digital media. We have a close partnership with iHeartMedia. They've been amazing partners for Experience Columbus, not only locally, but statewide and regionally as well. So you can find our content in radio, out of home, in state, um, and digital marketing as well. Um, with all the wonderful paid social content or social content that has been created, um, we are also working to amplify that across social channels as well. So there is paid social that's also part of the plan. Um, and then when it comes to messaging and what is the right message, right medium, right time, um, health and safety has been our top priority message during this time. Um, so we've really balanced that health and safety through our Live Forward pledge and other great work that our partners are doing, such as Easton. I know Jen will share a little bit more about that, along with what I'll call traffic driving media um, with some urgency around getting into our attractions, of course, with time ticketing, um, getting into our restaurants and supporting our local restaurants, getting into our, uh, you know, wonderful made and see bus retailers, as well as our other um, retail experiences such as Easton. Um, so, you know, really have, have balanced that messaging between health and safety um, and other, you know, key partner content and messaging during this time. Thank you, Sarah, for sharing. It really um, is interesting to hear, um, you know, when people think about the Convention and Visitors Bureau and Experience Columbus, uh, we you think about, you know, getting other people, you know, to explore our city. So it sounds like that, you know, we really pivoted as far as now focusing more locally and then outward um, to kind of draw up attention to all the wonderful things that our city has to offer. Um, so kind of pivoting off of that, um, Jen, can you really talk to us about how um, Easton has pivoted during this time and maybe uh, some of the messaging and things that you guys have had to change around and make sure that people are safe and have a wonderful visitor experience when they visit? Yeah, I mean, I think pivoting is um, kind of an understatement I've been saying pirouetting lately because there's so much constant change. Um, you know, when when the pandemic was first starting to impact Ohio, before the shutdown even, um, I think communication became critical, um, mostly with our merchant partners initially, um, to figure out what guidance they were being given by their corporate parents, um, as well as with our customer. You know, we were, you know, still open and limiting the number of people in indoor areas. Some of the tenants had to limit capacity. Um, and again, that was before the shutdown. So it really started in, in mid-March. Um, when we were quarantined, obviously Easton um, kind of had to shut down. And, and we never really shut down because there's people here 24 seven in terms of our staff, security and operations. But for the very first time, we closed our station building as an example. Um, which in 20 years time, it never happened. So it was crazy. And, you know, again, a lot of communication around that and the why we had mall walkers still coming, you know, our Easton Striders wanting to do their lap safely indoors in the cold. And we, and we weren't able to accommodate that. I mean, I was really amazed by the ingenuity and, and, and creativity of our restaurants during the quarantine who remained open for carry out and curbside. Um, you know, we had Brian Peters over at Brio making these crazy, incredibly funny videos, um, engaging guests. Uh, we had North Star staging um, parking lot brunches where, you know, even their ownership were roller skating orders to people's cars um, so that they could be safely delivered. Um, we saw some really unique things that um, that those 25 restaurants were doing. And of course, our grocery stores, the three grocery stores here remained open th during that time. So we were really promoting them in a big way, um, you know, with the message of we're all in this together, that Easton is here for you. Um, we, you know, leveraged that message from Governor DeWine, as well as just um, wanting the community to know that although most of Easton was closed, there was still a significant amount of businesses that were here to serve. And, and that really helped people, frankly. Um, 
to be able to still have those carry out um, and curbside options. Once we were able to safely reopen, once the governor put the safe restart plan out there, um, you know, then became the safety signage and the communication around, um, you know, staying six feet apart, wearing a mask, washing your hands. Um, we had hand sanitizing stations installed in every quadrant and every section of the property. Um, and really all of that still remains as well as the safety messaging. Um, I think we've heard a lot of positive um, comments from our customers saying, thank you for keeping us safe. I haven't gone many places, but I've gone to Easton because you guys have, have really taken it seriously and have been consistent. Um, so um, that's that's been really important. And then through this time of reopen, the communication with our tenant partners, I mean, over 250 brands here, has exploded. I mean, we are spending more time with talking to all of those folks than we ever have, which I think is a real silver lining um, that we've all become closer and the needs of each of those businesses is unique and different. So we've had to open up channels of communication that we that we never had. Um, you know, from in-person to, you know, I'm texting with people constantly, emails, I mean, things that, you know, you just have to do it in the most, you know, expedited as quickly as you can. So um, I think, you know, the whole team here is is really in it with them and, and we're all helping um, to do that. And, and I think, you know, the other part of the communication is that Easton's still a joyful place, you know, to come. It's where you can escape the everyday, you can take a minute in this pandemic and not forget about it, because obviously people are in masks and it's clear there's still a lot of safety protocols we need to follow in order to keep each other safe, but that we can also continue to uplift. And um, and that's that's really important as well. And thank you. I love that you say, you know, it was all hands on deck. It was a team effort. Um, and the key word that I took out of that was uniqueness that, you know, these were times where people, you know, your 25 restaurants and your other retailers, once they open, they really had to be unique and creative. So maybe uh, Jen and Sarah, can you maybe speak on um, some key advertising words that you were really using during this time to really bring home, you know, that messaging of you know safety and making people feel comfortable to either visit Columbus or you know visit you know the city or maybe visit Easton. You want to go first, Sarah? Yeah, sure. So um, as I mentioned with our Live Forward pledge, we were using a lot of Live For statements, but one in particular really focused on the pledge and the badge that comes along with that, that you can see kind of all over the place um, with our business partners that says this badge means we put your safety first. So we went right after it from a safety perspective. Um, the other messaging around Live Forward is, is a little more um, aspirational. So, you know, there, whether it's, it's about, um, you know, being able to live for free rides um, with a juxtaposition around, you know, a little girl on her dad's shoulders, um, thinking about, you know, potentially going to one of our attractions. Um, so, you know, a number of messages around that. Um, and then when we're talking more tactically about ticket sales and what's available out there and different ways that you can still get out and experience the city and save, um, we still did have and we're able to offer a number of savings opportunities. So we integrated those messages as well, but can't underscore the importance of health and safety and um, you know, putting that, that right into the marketplace and, um, and being very overt about it. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, our marketing team came up with a really nice campaign around the safety as well that um, we welcomed our guests back with, which was our doors are open our arms are open and our hearts are open. And, and we really wanted the community to know we missed them. You know, we really appreciated the support that we received during the quarantine, but also that we really missed seeing them and wanted them to safely return when they felt comfortable. Um, you know, the mask uh, wearing is controversial for some. I'm not gonna get into a long soliloquy on that. I can't understand it. It is to keep each other safe. 
Uh, but we ended up leveraging our superhero Easton Man eventually when we saw that just saying it could help another person maybe wasn't enough. Um, so he's saying just wear it. And uh, we had him out on property actually a number of weekends giving out free masks and, and sharing that message, um, which really seemed to resonate and, and add a, an element of fun um, and, and uh, playfulness. Um, and then I think we've really continued with, the, we're in this together. Like it's gonna take all of us to stay open, to stay safe. And, you know, we, we really um, felt like that was a great handle to continue to, um, to leverage as well. So more recently with um, new tenants opening and, um, you know, uh, new news coming, we're, you know, talking about finding it at Easton, whether you want to eat, dine, or be entertained. You know, our cinema got back open in August, finally. Um, so we've started peppering that in as well, but, um, you know, really started from a, a position of, um, of love in our heart and, you know, really appreciating um, the community and, and our customers. Yeah, great. Thank you for sharing. Um, it sounds like, you know, Easton and Experience Columbus are really trying to make people feel comfortable. And I think for our attendee businesses, they're really wondering um, when are we going to start to see maybe some of the same traffic that we saw before as far as, you know, travelers. And so that brings me to my next question for Carrie. Um, when travelers are beginning to travel, um, what right now, when, when they're choosing a destination, what are they looking for? Oh, I think you're muted, I, Carrie. Yes. I knew I was going to do that. <laughs> uh, I wanted to first say, Jen, um, having firsthand experience as a tenant at Easton with our visitor center out there, your team was absolutely amazing. The communication and the, you know, helping all tenants feel there were, that everything was safe out there and all the signage and whatnot. You guys did a terrific job. So I just wanted to throw that comment out there. Thank um, you, Karen. Uh, thanks for the question, Kiana. Um, what are travelers looking for right now when they're choosing a destination? So, um, you know, we have this entire time really leaned on our partners at Longwoods International, and they've been doing a study of American travelers. So according to their most recent research, um, half of um, people feel safe to travel, half of Americans are feeling safe to travel this fall season, and about two thirds of those who plan to travel will be visiting friends and relatives, while 58% um, plan to take a road trip somewhere in the United States. So Columbus is a prime destination for road trips. We've always been a regional drive destination. So this is really, really good news for a destination like, like ours. Um, outdoor activities are preferred during pandemic travel. So, you know, the shopping out at Easton and, and being out in the open air is, is really a great, um, a great place to be. Um, also visiting national, state and local parks. Uh, fall foliage tours, walking tours. I know that our partners at Columbus Food Adventures and Columbus City Adventures have some great tours coming up in October around the holidays, hiking and biking and, and those sorts of activities. Um, clearly, a sizable percentage of travelers are just now settling into a new normal of traveling with the pandemic. And they're just, you know, reaching out and, and you know, as both Sarah and Jen mentioned, they want to know what health and safety standards we're taking as a destination and we're taking as individual attractions. So all of that messaging is so super important because they are just, you know, they feel the need to travel and get away and get out of their homes. And so they want to know that it's safe to do so. So um, with that also a heavy emphasis, uh, like I said, on visiting friends and relatives, road trips, individual outdoor activities all reflect on a relatively perceived safety of those types of getaways. Um, also, according to the survey, the percentage of travelers who have changed their travel plans due to COVID has steadily declined. Um, it was once at a peak of 85% in early April, and now in September, it's closer to 67%. So people really want to get out. 
and about half travelers are also feeling safe dining in local restaurants and shopping in our local retail stores, which again is another positive sign um, that recovery is, is coming. Those are all great numbers. I know for me, I'm ready to get out more and travel somewhere. And um, I have noticed, at least for my friends, um, you know, wanting to come to Columbus and go to our attractions with their families, like the zoo. Um, so I think people are really willing to, you know, get out and kind of move around where they can drive. Um, mm -hmm. And that brings me to my next question. Uh, Easton is a large and unique tourism destination. So Jen, can you speak on what has been your biz biggest success in getting visitors to start returning um, and maybe um, things that you have tried and maybe you would have done differently that didn't work? And so speak on that. Uh, sure, I mean, yeah, we've been trying a lot of things um, as everyone has, you know, taking a page out of the innovation um, book. I mean, I think that will be something that's here to stay that, you know, that consistently looking for new innovative ways to do things. And, and we've always done that, but it's just heightened. Um, you know, I think one of the first examples was during the quarantine around Easter, when obviously we wouldn't be having anyone visit the center or see the Easter Bunny. Uh, we did a drive through um, Easter Bunny event, and we had over 600 cars of families come to just wave and have a moment to say hello to the Easter Bunny, um, and, and really, you know, speaking to that need to get out of the house and to do something. Um, that was that was really fun, and we could do that safely because most people were home. You know, to do a drive-through right now, you know, we might have 6,000 cars, and that wouldn't work. Um, Another thing we did in May was open up a drive-in movie theater, taking one of our parking lots in our expansion district and converting that to a, um, a, a vintage looking um, drive-in setup. And uh, people felt safe coming to the drive-in because we were socially distance, distancing cars. You know, everyone had two spaces. So if you wanted to stay in your vehicle, you you still had that, you know, um, space in between, and if you wanted to get your chairs out and, and sit next to it, you were still um, safely distant from the next car. I think that was something we could not have anticipated how much um, the community loved that and um, really appreciated the opportunity to get out of the house safely. Um, many came back multiple times. It was um, one of the only things people were doing. Um, someone on our team that helped spearhead it, uh, she tells a story of a little boy and his grandmother coming together and, you know, this being the first time she had left the house um, because there was not, you know, a safe place to go and they could enjoy a, a, a movie together. So that really started to get people to come back and sort of say, what's going on at Easton? I can be in my car. I can pop around to some different restaurants and pick up carry out or a couple of the expansion brands, 40 Deuce and Forbidden Root were actually bringing meals to people's cars. Um, and it, it just gave a toe in the water for those who weren't really ready um, to you know, totally experience um, the center yet. And then more recently, we've been doing yoga. So we have these 70 inch hoops that we put out on our town square on Friday uh, mornings. Um, and about 50 people can fit there and safely do yoga in their own hoop. Uh, we require a mask until you're safely, you know, on your mat and, and ready to practice. Um, and that's been so well received that we've launched it up in our yard, which is um, a common space, green space in the expansion uh, with one of our tenants. So Lifetime does the um, uh, Friday morning. We have Good Energy by 7 doing classes on Saturday mornings. And now Athletics started on the town square on Sunday morning. So, um, you know, you can get your yoga on in three ways outdoors safely. Um, and hopefully through the end of October, you know, if the snow doesn't start to fly. Um, and so, you know, maybe I would have started that yoga sooner. Um, we didn't really start that till about a month ago uh, because we weren't sure how to do it. And um, again, just innovation thinking, looking at the rest of the world and what were they doing and where could we get inspiration and um, a park in Brooklyn actually painted circles. And so 
we thought, well, we don't really want to paint the circles because we don't want them there all the time, but could we make these hoops? And our, our operations team actually made them. Um, so yeah, we're, we're um, definitely trying lots of stuff. And then starting today, we're bringing back our drive-in, really not as a movie theater, more as a community asset um, and allowing nonprofits um, to use it to have their fundraisers uh, that they weren't able to have in person at this time, which is a real hardship. Um, and working with them and their sponsors to be able to fund that and, and to be able to have it reopen. Uh, we have our Easton Fashion Night tonight, and we're going to do um, a nice panel between um, Experience Columbus, the lead designer um, that's here for their finale show on Saturday. Uh, we'll be interviewed, and then we're going to show Crazy uh, Rich Asians as just a fun kind of fashion-y movie afterward. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think, you know, flexibility, um, reimagining thinking differently and and bringing innovation um would be my kind of biggest takeaways you guys have done some really cool things in these last you know six months or so um and you talked about flexibility um and again the common word of pivoting um and you kind of mentioned the bright spot of you know everyone was stuck in the house and we really wanted to have that Easter bunny experience. So having them drive by. Um, this question is for everyone. Um, I know Jen has mentioned some of her bright spots during this time and she may have a few more, um, but I'll start with Carrie. Can you guys maybe talk about what have been the bright spots in your roles uh, within your organization during this time? Sure. So in addition to all the innovation, you know, Jen mentioned many things. All of our partners have been so creative during this time with, you know, their their creativity of family meals on with curbside pickups. And, you know, soon to come, we have many, many um, partners who are looking at, you know, for the holiday time, what can they kind of put in a box, you know, science in a box, art in a box, um, you know, taste of Columbus in a box to sell for um, holidays. And everybody's just being super creative and innovative. So I think that absolutely, and I, I think it's really um, kind of got everybody's creative juices flowing. Um, in addition to that, I would say just from a real like camaraderie perspective, our industry has come together so much during this time, both locally here in Columbus but also nationally and you know, amongst all of our, our DMO friends across the country, you know, sharing ideas, best practices, just generally supporting one another when we when we hear layoffs are happening and and you know, just to give people a kind of a, a you know a lift up when needed. Um, so the camaraderie of peers across the country, um, the leadership that our you know US Travel Association has provided in lobbying for tourism um, and all the, the CARES Act dollars and, and all of those sorts of things, those call to actions, I think organizations and um, all the different sectors across the hospitality industry have really stepped up during this time and recognized that they are in the hospitality and tourism industry and they're playing their role now more than ever. Um, because it's so important to do so and just I think to that point, you know, out of out of something, you know, negative like COVID comes the, the, the realization and the general understanding that tourism is a vital part of the economic health of a destination. And, you know, learning that and realizing that is super important for our elected officials and, you know, just community leaders in general so that they are, they continue to support um, tourism moving forward. Sarah? Do you have any bright spots that you wanted to share? Yeah, I uh, share in many of the sentiments of both Jen and Carrie. I think the camaraderie, the way everyone has truly come together. Um, you know, I and our team from a marketing perspective have come together every single week with opening up new communication channels. Um, if anyone has reached out to us to ask us for help, we're like, yes, we'll do it. We'll figure out a way. Um, everyone has had such a positive can-do attitude and is really, um, 
you know, d done their absolute best during this time to be as supportive as we can be. I think in addition to that, um, in spite of the challenges and work from home and everybody, you know, Zooming and all those things, we have been able to launch some really exciting initiatives for Experience Columbus. So um, I mentioned our partnership with iHeartMedia. A big piece of that was our podcast. We've wanted to do a podcast in partnership with iHeart and um, in spite of the pandemic and it being very difficult to get people together in a small room and um, some of our plans of building our own podcast uh, studio being pushed off, we were able to make all of that happen. Um, we have recorded a 13 episode podcast. We've launched five so far. We have more coming out um, that really highlights the amazing things that are happening in our city, in our community, um, from business leaders, from residents, um, some of the hidden gems and lesser known stories about um, our attractions, retail, our music scene, our arts community and so many other things so I'll put in a little plug it's called live forward live you can get it anywhere where you can download your podcasts um, you know knowing that that we've had a little compression of our visitor center staff we did launch a multi-channel chatbot uh, which gave us the opportunity to connect with residents and visitors alike with 24 7 access um, so if you need quick answers to questions um, that don't require a, a very long itinerary builder that's better done with a live person um, that is available on our website Facebook in Facebook Messenger um, during normal uh, visitor center hours that we'll kick you over to a live representative too if you need um, some enhanced service there. So, um, you know, through all of this, you know, we have been able to um, really push forward, come together, um, get some other tools and resources out there uh, to, to benefit the community. So we're, um, we're excited about that. And, and those have definitely been some bright spots for me. Yes, thank you. I love the plug. Um, I mean, Jay. I I'm so impressed with everything you all have done. I mean, thank you for the the Live Forward campaign. I mean, we were early signers on that. And um, also the content. I mean, I've logged on and logged into so many different um, workshops and lectures and webinars that you have um, offered to the community and across so many different topics too. It's really astounding. And I will look for your podcasts as well and, and that chatbot. That's great to know. Um, you know, I think the, the connection to our team and our tenant partners, our merchants here, you know, really stands out um, for me as, as a bright spot and, and part of the, the silver lining, as I said earlier. I mean, that, that communication is so critical and we can only help them if we're aware of what they need and, and really trying to, to have that be so, so much more robust and seamless, um, you know, I think is, is really good. Um, I mean, seeing people enjoying Easton, like it can make me cry right now. I mean, it's so great to see people here and we have these new swings up in our expansion and like they're full. I mean, we just put them up like two weeks ago and literally like people are coming out of the woodwork to just be with their loved one or their family on one of these swings. Like it, it's, it's great. It makes me, it makes me so happy. Um, I mean, there's been some really hard things that have gone on during this time beyond the pandemic with issues around racial justice that still are percolating and, and really tough. And, you know, we created this unity pavilion, which was a, you know, a sad uh, exit of one of our tenants, long term tenants, Bon V. Uh, but we converted that space when they closed into an artistic installation that was meant initially to just uplift and spark joy. And with the protests and what was happening in our country, we added a layer to that that included some beautiful murals that were um, uh, painted by five women, local artists, um, black, brown, and white, um, to really speak to um, the moment and the movement and, and use black voices to amplify that. And so there's quotes uh, by Nelson Mandela and Maya Angelou and Toni Morrison. And it's it's just this beautiful space that um, it had seating. I mean, we put some seating up there so people can just sit and enjoy and kind of take them in. And um, I'm really proud that we did that. Um, and we're, we're in the process, um, a mural's being painted right now, the largest mural installation we've ever done on the side of the Worth Avenue garage, which would be the Macy's garage. We added two levels to it. 
um, and it's honoring the work of a deceased um, African-American artist. He was sort of one of the elders of the black community in the arts um, named Walt Neal. And Walt's work is all over the city. Many of the pieces have disappeared because the building would have gotten renovated or torn down. And this is a piece that no longer exists. So we're, we're working um, to recreate that um, with the blessing of his widow and his family and those that uh, were, were strong mentees of his are actually painting the mural. Um, and so I have like goosebumps five inches tall right now. Um, it will be an amazing piece that speaks to hopefulness and African-American culture and um, Martin Luther King's message and um, all of these things just visually um, kind of emanate from it. So I invite you to come check that out. It, it will be a new bright spot. I love that, Jen. Thank you for sharing that. I actually wasn't aware that you guys had the unity space there at the bon in Bombay. Um, and so that's amazing to hear that you were able to change that space into something positive and also have, you know, a large representation of kind of what's going on right now and, and turn it to an uplifting and positive message. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, and then I wanted to segue to um, kind of our my next question. This was a question that was posed from um, the audience, but um, it sounds like Easton has, you know, changed a lot in the short term. Um, has your, do you believe that your long term strategy will change? I think that we will continue to need to find new ways to support our merchants. Um, you know, we've done a lot with curbside pickup, you know, the buy online pickup in store is a really important part of their business and we want to help facilitate that and leverage that for them. Um, you know, the whole issue of lines and, and do we need, you know, a, a platform for queue lists. Um, we were in the process of working on our chat bot um, as the pandemic hit and that got paused, but I think, you know, that will help our tenants as well as our customers um, and, and that the need to kind of um, continually reinvent and rethink. I mean, there are lots of changes that were starting to emerge and, and things happening in the in the retail environments that this pandemic has just accelerated. Um, so we're, we're going fast to try to keep up and see, you know, what can we test this year? Um, you know, labor, that is a huge problem for brands to find good people. And so we're hoping to test a group supporting us with that, um, as well as, as some other things that might include same day delivery. Um, so keeping, keeping advanced and using technology to um, facilitate, but not to replace the human touch. And thank you for sharing that. And um, I think we're all aware uh, in this room, both um, our panelists, and for our attendees that, you know, the pandemic has had um, a large financial impact on, you know, businesses and our city. So Carrie, can you speak on the estimated financial impact of uh, tourism revenue in Columbus? Sure, I can try. Um, you know, we, we're not gonna be certain of the full impact um, until we're able to do a true economic impact study with our partners at Tourism Economics. But um, what we do know is that, you know, many restaurants are down approximately 50%. Many of our hotels are running on average 20% occupancies. Um, at Experience Columbus in particular, working with the meetings and conventions segment, you know, it's really been very quiet since April. We have canceled 242 events, which equals an estimated $228 million in direct spend. And the cancellations right now are through the end of the year and then even into the first quarter of 2021. So our team, um, our sales team has been amazing at Experience Columbus and they have been contacting, you know, all of the groups that are currently scheduled for 2021 to, to see what their plans are about wanting to meet or not meet or, you know, rebook. Um, the groups that have been meeting in the last couple of weeks are small corporate groups, social events, some sporting events, weddings, um, all of the and in all of those cases they're complying with the governor's guidelines and and you know um, following all of the the safety protocols um, 
So a lot of those smaller groups are really holding onto their plans for 2020 and into 2021. Um, we're, we're waiting for the governor certainly to potentially raise that not that 300 maximum of 300 that'll really have a, um, a positive impact on groups being able to meet in Columbus but um, we do expect additional cancellations to to come into 2021 but on a bright side <laughs> uh, we have seen many groups that are rescheduling in 2021 and all the way through to 2026 so you know, while we're a little slower right now, we do look forward to business returning and our economy um, reigniting um, moving forward. And then um, when do you foresee that there would be potentially a bounce back for Columbus? So um, for Columbus and, and Sarah alluded to this with our with our campaign um, that we're focused locally right now and also throughout the state of Ohio and and will continue to um, to grow that circle. Um, right now, leisure travel is what's driving visitation, visiting friends and relatives. You know, we're seeing that now. We'll continue to see that April and May. Um, festival season, I think, will will help ignite visitors coming into our our community. And you know, I've already had a couple of conversations with some of the festival uh, organizers that they really are working on plans to be able to socially distance and require masks and really hold their events um, in person. So you know, hopefully that that stays the course. Um, business travel, um, you know that that should be the next to follow uh, with leisure travel and that really is dependent upon um, companies kind of lifting their travel bans returning back to work you know work from work um, and lifting travel bans so that they can travel for business um, and then the last to return will be the meetings and conventions that group business um, conventions conferences trade shows those bigger attendance and that's really we're looking toward the second half of 2021 um, for that so you know, right now we're kind of saying forecasts for Columbus um, in 2021 will be around 60% of 2019 levels. Um, and 2019 was really a banner year for us. So, um, you know, improvement for sure in 2021. Um, and a lot of, lot of optimism that um, we can keep improving. And great. And then I actually have a audience question for you, Carrie, a follow up question. What are the top reasons visitors come to Columbus? Um, it has this change in, in 2020. Well, yes, it's changed in 2020. Actually, the number one reason to visit Columbus is actually events and festivals. So the fact that all of those were canceled this past year, um, you know, that was a primary reason that people that people came here to visit. What we do also know is a lot of people, about 52% of our leisure visitors are coming to visit at friends and relatives. So a great opportunity for our local residents to invite their family and their friends to, to come in. As I mentioned earlier, outdoor activities. And so, you know, we're fortunate. I don't think here in Columbus we really get terribly cold and, you know, and and winter doesn't really arrive sometimes until January. So all those outdoor activities are still absolutely doable. So, you know, encouraging residents to invite their friends and family in um, will be really, really great for us. Um, festivals returning um, next year, sporting events returning next year. I think that's all, um, that's all gonna be helpful in, in returning visitors to Columbus. Yes. And then you kind of talked about, you know, future events, festivals and events coming. Um, maybe you guys can kind of speak on each of your departments or some things that you're working on. Is there anything that um, Experience Columbus or East End has lined up um, to really attract people through the holiday season? I mean, we are um, always, you know, a nice attraction with our lights. Um, so we've um, had a million five, and now we're going to be closer to two million lights because we've um, we're going to light up the expansion this year as well. And I think, you know, our hope is that we can still light up Easton 
on the Friday night where our big lighting ceremony would have happened, but that we can have people cross every portion of the property because when you see those lights all go on at once, it doesn't matter where you are here, it's still kind of this very magical moment. Um, and so we're talking a lot about that. There's some new decor elements up in the expansion that I think will be really fun and add to the environment there. And, you know, we are not going to have Santa be here in person. We're going to do a virtual Santa experience really to keep our guests safe, to ensure there's not big queuing or crowds. Um, and, you know, we wouldn't want any Santa to get COVID on our watch. So um, we're going to have more to talk about on that front, but it will be a very San special Santa experience. Um, it will just be, it will be virtual. To Jen's point, there's so many amazing things that you can enjoy throughout Columbus in a healthy and safe way during the holidays. And so um, we're working on a full roundup, obviously the, the amazing things that, um, that Jen just highlighted that Easton is doing, but also our attractions, the zoo, Franklin Park Conservatory, even our neighborhoods, the Short North and German Village. Um, there's so many ways that you can support our local retail community, our business community. Um, you can give the gift of experience that we have here. Um, so there's many ways to shop and engage and support um, all of our you know, various industries throughout Columbus during the holiday season. And we do have uh, a campaign and a, an effort um, from Experience Columbus's perspective that will be uh, very focused on those initiatives. Uh, thank you. Um, hopefully it'll be a wonderful holiday season. I know the holiday times are especially my favorite, especially the ones that involve eating. So I always try and get <laughs> out to my restaurants and um, celebrate being married with food. So always excited for that. Um, I did want to ask all of you, um, what have each of you learned in each of your roles during the pandemic? that you will continue to implement in future years. And I will start with Carrie. Okay. Um, I'd say, you know, we've accomplished so many things remotely and shifting to digital platforms. So I'm gonna make a plug for our web-based certified tourism ambassador classes. Um, we've successfully continued to certify Columbus residents you know, inside and outside the hospitality community be, to become proud ambassadors of Columbus. And, you know, now more than ever, we need our residents to step up and be those proud ambassadors. As I mentioned earlier, inviting their friends and family to come in and visit, that's going to help reignite our tourism economy here. Um, you know, obviously we'll go back to in-person networking and visiting our wonderful attractions and businesses when that time is right. Um, but I believe that the web-based CTA classes are absolutely here to stay. Um, the other would be, Sarah mentioned earlier, our pivot to focus, focusing locally uh, with our marketing, our resident engagement and being that community resource. Um, all of that has been super exciting and I think also is here to stay moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Just on that, um, I was going to say the same thing. So that, you know, kind of local focus, making sure, you know, to this, this the whole purpose of this webinar, the, the power of tourism and the impacts of tourism and its importance in our local economy. We want to make sure that we're still um, locally focused. But in addition to that, we'll continue to build not only in state, but beyond um, as we are able to. And it makes sense. We can do that from a health and safety perspective and then certainly looking at budgets as well. Um, I think for us to content creation and production has um, been amped up significantly over 200% for from an experienced Columbus perspective. Um, and we have absolutely loved kind of very similar to Jen's experience with her all of her tenants. We have absolutely loved the closer engagement and partnership that we've been able to have with so many of our small business partners, our restaurant owners, our retail partners, our attractions. And we want to continue to be able to do that and deliver that same level of content support support, integration, and syndication across all of our channels um, as we go forward. So that's a big focus um, for our team and how to continue to scale that and, and deliver um, that same level of content and support of the community. Yeah, I mean, I think we will continue to um, have our safety lens, you know, really 
probably through 2021 and how we reimagine events and experiences. Um, I think we'll have to continue wearing those creativity caps and, and keep it new and fresh um, and interesting, which is a good thing. Um, you know, I, I don't think you can underestimate the importance of team connection and in-person um, uh, meetups and 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 uh, you know i know i've really missed that um but i think we have to continue to use the tools of technology um to to be that bridge until we can um and to find other new technological advances that help not only team building but experience building um for sure i mean i think you know we we all really miss being together with our team even though we're here we're safely distanced we're in our office we're not having celebrations we're not having those big meetings as a team and um you know i really miss that but you know we'll continue to be safe as as we need to be yes well i wanted to thank you guys so much for your time today I think um, you guys mentioned, you know, being innovative, collaborating, you know, thinking on your feet, technology. Um, so those are all some keywords that we can carry into moving forward. And um, I feel comforted in knowing that I live in such an amazing city um, that is co collaborative and, you know, that really is the Columbus way. And I think that if any city were to make it, it would be ours because, you know, we're fighters and we're innovators. Um, and we are looking forward to brighter days ahead. So thank you guys again for your time and, you know, talking about the power of tourism, especially in our wonderful city of Columbus. And I'm going to go ahead and end this webinar. So thank you everyone for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.